Um, Romans chapter 16, um, we, um, we've been going through Romans in class and in church a little bit. In some areas, I've, uh, some things we've done with 2 Thessalonians and in Romans, we've done in the, in the Bible school, and some of them we've done in here that I thought may be a blessing and a help to you. And, um, and this is one of those ones when I was outlining it, looking through Romans 16, I thought this might be a help to all of us as well. Uh, to pick up on this, and, uh, and I think it will be a help. Romans chapter 16, look at verse number 1. We'll read through several verses here and see if we can get something that will be a help to us. In uh, verse number 1, I commend you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Sincrea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a... I don't know, I would say this wrong, Securer, I think is probably the right way to say it, Securer, of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, and you've probably heard that name several times before in different places, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house, salute my well-beloved Apennitus, uh, who is the first fruit of Achaia unto Christ? Greet Mary. Now that's a name you can say. The first one, very good. Who bestowed a much labor on us? Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. He goes on with some others. Greet uh, Amplius Am- Am- or Amplius. My beloved of the Lord, salute Urbane, our helpers in Christ. And I, I like calling this one Stacy, uh, but it's not. It's probably Stachius or something like that, but I like it because it's Stacy. Stacy, my beloved, salute Apellus, approved in Christ. Salute them which are at Aristobulus' uh, household. Salute Herodian, my kinsmen. Greet them that are of the household of Narcissus. Uh, I don't know that he wasn't narcissistic, but it's his name. It's, that's what it is. Maybe he's hard to get along with. I have no clue which is in the Lord, salute uh, Trifina and Trophosa, um, who labor in the Lord, salute beloved Persis, which labor much in the Lord, salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, his mother and mine, salute, it, that other word there, I'm not going to be able to do that, and Phlegon, Hermas, uh, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them, salute, he goes on some other ones here, salute, salute, all the way down into verse number 17, where he starts talking about people that cause division. Now, I titled the message, Worthy of Salute. <clears throat> salute is mentioned several times. Verse number 7, verse number 9, verse number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we're in a military town, so most people know what a salute is. Um, and, and you understand that that's a, a way to greet, um, to address somebody with a, 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 a kind wishes would be the salute he's talking about here. Uh, maybe for us in the military, we'd know that's a way of honoring somebody else. Uh, we would salute them. And so he did this in here. And when I was looking through this, I, I, I looked through some of the things that are in it, tried to put some things together that I thought would be a help, help to you. And I thought, I remember one of my favorite places in the Bible is to read about David's mighty men. That's one of my absolute favorites. I mean, you can watch any kind of Marvel movie that's out there. They've never made one that fits what the David's mighty men was about. I mean, that would blow every... Thor can't do anything compared to the guys that are... that are uh, And they're Adino and, and all the things that those guys did. And there's just amazing... I, I, I love reading that, that story about those men... And when I read that, I think this is David's mighty men. These are people that David said, they, they started off, listen now, as nothings. They came to him in dread, the debt and distressed and discontented. He turned them into mighty men of valor, and they became mighty for the Lord. And I, I, just, I look at that about how God did that, and then it, a chapter highlights how great these men were and what they did. And then here is, here is Paul doing much of the same thing in this chapter 16, highlighting people that are just average people, but have been doing things serving the Lord that he felt were worthy of a salute. These are people that he felt like it's worthy of of, of, saluting them and saying they did a good job. This is is somebody worth not just writing to that church and saying these are people worth speaking about. These are people that have been placed in the Word of God that for years and years to come, people are going to be talking about these people and what they did. And I thought, is there anything we can learn from this about how to be, listen now, somebody for the Lord that's worthy of a salute? Somebody for the Lord that's worthy 
of a salute. And I looked at some things about these people, and I tried to outline some things that I saw in these people that I think may be a help. The first one is this. <clears throat> if you're making notes in verse 1, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a, here's the first one, a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea. Um, now, when I was looking at this, I thought it was interesting. This first one is a lady named Phoebe. Now, before you get to thinking, yeah, well, those people in the Bible, they were a different caliber of people. No, they're people just like you. In fact, when you look through this list, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find women. You're going to find men. You're going to find husbands and wives that work together. You're going to find teams of two, two men that would do things together. You're going to find individuals who are all by themselves. Listen, you're going to find Jews. You're going to find Gentiles. You're going to find every different walk of life. You're going to find them in this list. So before somebody says, well, I could never be a, a, a lady. I could never be like Phoebe. Yes, you can be like Phoebe. <clears throat> you can be a servant of the church of God at Corinth or at Sincrea or for us in Copper's Cove. You could be a servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I, I, I thought about this when I looked at this. She is a person that serves the church. Um, this is in Sincrea, and Sincrea was just a little port area just outside of Corinth. Now, what's interesting is when you look at that, uh, most people think that probably that church in Corinth was of note in the Bible. This place in Sincrea was probably a church that was started outside of that church at Corinth. Maybe that port area that was just off to the side, that's maybe another church was started in that area in Sincrea, which is very, very close to Corinth. But this is a lady that was of note in that church. It's a lady that must have done, it doesn't tell you anything about her, all it says is she was someone that was a servant in that church and must have played a pretty significant, significant part. She was a helper in that church. She was someone that helped um, Paul and helped other people in the church. So let me say something else about her. She must have been somebody, just this lady, that was trustworthy. You know why you know that? Because look at the last verse of this. <clears throat> just underneath it, You've probably got a little uh, marking in your Bible. It says, written to the Romans from Corinthus and sent by Phoebe, servant of the church at Sincrea. This is a woman, maybe she didn't write a book of the Bible. Maybe she wasn't someone that was, uh, that was well-known in a lot of places. But listen, she was well-known enough to that church and to Paul that he could trust her with wherever she was going to Rome. For whatever reason, he could put that book that was worth that much in her hands and trust that she was going to get it all the way to its desired destination. This is a great, Romans is a fantastic book filled with so many great things. What a, what a jewel, what a treasure she had in her hands. She didn't have uh, several copies or one of several copies. She had the only written word of God in her hands. And she was trustworthy enough that Paul said, I can put it in her hands and trust. It'll get all the way to its desired destination. I'm thinking to myself, am I worthy of a salute when it comes to being that trustworthy of a servant of God? And if I'm not, what could I be doing to try to get myself to that place? I preached uh, a while ago on uh, a thing about servants. I preached two, two uh, messages, and it sounded insulting to be looked at it. I said, we're looking for fat servants. F-A-T, fat servants. I've always called it fat servants because I've said, number one, they need to be faithful. Uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 4 that the steward must be faithful. You've got to be faithful. Paul said that he was, he was thankful that God put him in the ministry, counting him faithful, counting him faithful for the ministry. And so uh, when God's looking for people to, to be true servants, he's looking for people to be faithful, people you can trust, faithful. And I always said faithful, and then second was available. You can find a lot of people that are faithful that are just never around when you need them. I mean, they're faithful to God, but they're just not in the, the area where you need them. So I said faithful and available, and then people have always got to be teachable. Because if you ever get to the place you think you know so much that you don't ever need to learn anything, you're going to mess yourself up. Faithful, available, and teachable. And this lady that was here, obviously something about her was to such a degree that Paul felt like not only is she of note in Sincrea, but she's somebody that I can trust to give the Word of God to and carry it to the people of Rome. And you remember, he had not been to Rome yet. And his heart was burdened for this place, and he spent several chapters of writing them of how to be saved. This woman, listen now, was carrying salvation in her hands to all those people in Rome. 
Can you be trusted with carrying the truths of God to people? That's a servant worthy of a salute. Are we those types of servants? I want you to hold your place and look with me in Philippians chapter number 2. And if you know your Bible, you know exactly where we're going. Philippians chapter number 2. And I want you to look at some things about a servant that are worthy to look at. And we'll move on to the next one. Philippians chapter 2. If I was going to list the greatest servant that has ever served anywhere, in any way, shape, or form, you would have to say the Lord Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter number 2, in verse number 1, watch what he says. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy that ye be like-minded, <clears throat> having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. It, listen, if you're going to be a servant, it can't be about fighting and it can't be about your own glory. Strive for vain glory. But in, watch what he says, lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Wait a minute, Paul, you're telling me that I looked this up, you need me to travel some 758 miles to carry your mail for you? You wrote a letter to somebody and you want it carried to them and you expect me to travel. Now I'm not talking about 758 miles in a jet airplane. I'm not talking about 758 miles in a a Ford pickup truck. I'm talking about having to maybe get in a a caravan or get on some animal and travel across country and then get in a boat, travel across some water and try to get to a place. And you want me to humble myself enough to be the person to carry your mail somewhere? In lowliest of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It's others. It's about others. Let this mind, this type of mindset be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the greatest servant that's ever lived. Who being in the form of God, I've got position. Don't you know who I am? Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. No reputation. Took upon him the form of a servant. Was made in the likeness of men. Being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You know, people have said for years, you want to find a way to go up, you need to first find a way to go down. Wherefore, God hath also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen real close to this. Are you worthy of a salute? If you're worthy of a salute, you're going to have this mindset. It's about others. I can humble myself and I can serve other people. It won't be about my reputation. It won't be about me. It'll be about other people. Those are the type of people that you find in here that Paul said they're worthy of a salute. A servant. A servant. Secondly, look at verse number 2. That you receive from the Lord as become a saint's and that ye assist her in whatever business she hath need of, for she hath been a, and we said this a while ago, a succorer of many and myself also. Now, that is a hard word to say, and uh, if you look it up and try to figure out what it means, it's pretty easy. It means to run to somebody to support them, to give aid to somebody that's in difficulty, to give, give give them help or deliver them from some kind of suffering to take care of them. In this particular place, it, it probably has to do with this same lady. And let me say it this way. I think probably what they're saying is this lady was probably of some type of means or some type of, uh, maybe she was affluent in some way. She may have had some means to her. And what she would do, according to this, and, and as much time as I spent studying this, I, I should know this lady's uh, everything about her life. I, I spent a lot of time like studying into what could this be with this person. This Sakura that she is, is a person that aided Paul and aided other people as they were trying to minister, as they were trying to do things for God. She supplied them and helped them. <clears throat> you know, I thought about that. You know, there's another place that that word is mentioned. It's mentioned that that's what Jesus Christ does. He succors them. He runs to their aid. Listen, watch this now. Listen really close. We just read it in Philippians, but here's the idea. Here's God that 
God that was in glory left the riches of glory. The St. Corinthians chapter 8, he says this, he left the riches of glory and became poor so that you could be made rich. Here's a woman that may be of some means, of some ability, lowers herself down and says, I'm going to be a, a help to other people. I'm going to supply what their needs are. That, let me tell you something. That's being Christ-like. Amen. That's being Christ-like. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and it has been, it's been a lot of crazy things going on, and I've been trying to like field them and deal with them and, and, uh, and work through some stuff. And, and they've made me kind of uh, uh, jagged and, and irritated in some ways. Some of the stuff, everything's with the city we're trying to deal with. And, and, uh, and so we had prayer time. We have prayer time on Tuesdays. And uh, I came in for prayer time, and it was just me and one other gentleman that was there, everybody else either sick or they weren't able to be there. <clears throat> and uh, so we divided up the list, and we prayed. And while I was praying, I'm thinking through all these things, making notes, the other man that was with me, he wouldn't mind if I mentioned his name, his Brother Ted. He sits about in the middle over there. He's kind of newer, part of the prayer team. Brother Ted's a really good man. And Brother Ted began to pray for me. And I was just sitting over there. And he began to pray for me. And I'm telling you, I felt like God was sitting at the table with us. Like it wasn't just us two, it was three of us sitting there. And, uh, and, it, and, it, and just an overwhelming feeling of you've been jagged because you've been trying to do things yourself. Let me take care of some things. Let me, let me handle things. And, uh, and we got through and I said, we, we did our Bible study and we talked and I said, Let's take some time, if you don't mind. Tell me about you. I don't know you that well, and I want to know you. Tell me. One of the things he did that just it blew my mind, it was, a, it was a, a while ago, several months ago. I was in the hallway, and I preached a message, and I, I wasn't really feeling that great about the message. I was just kind of feeling a little bit down on my own self, personally. And uh, nobody said anything to me, and I didn't say anything to anybody about that. I don't even know if it, anybody caught on to it. But on the way out of the of the hallway. Everybody always shakes my hand. We talk. He walked up to me and waited, waited until he got an opening, and he reached up and put his, put his hand on the side of my face. And he held my face, and he pulled it kind of close to him, and he said, you're doing a good job, son. And patted me and walked out. I've never forgot that. I don't know what, what he sensed or what he picked up on, but he felt something, and he, and he shared it. And it made me want to know this man. It made me really want to know more about him. So I said, tell me your story. Tell me your life. And, and he did. And he began to tell me some things about himself. And he began to tell me some things about the people that sat in that section over there. There's a, there's a good little, I didn't know, there's a, a good little group over there that I've never tapped into in that little section. He was telling me about some of them. This is one of the things he told me. He says, you don't know this about, and he named one of the people, and I won't mention his name. He said, uh, do you know that every once in a while he hands me money and tells me to go give it to people? I'm like the go-between, and I go and give money to people. And I said, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, brother so-and-so, he does it all the time. I said, that is a, that's, a, that's a really sweet man. He's a kind man, the man he's talking about. And he said, yeah, he does it all the time. And he'll give, he'll give things to people. And he said he took something to somebody the other day, and he said, I, I want to give you this thing. And the, the guy said, I don't know that I really need it. And he said, well, somebody gave it to me to give to you. He said, well, I don't think I really need it. And he goes, well, do you want it? He says, no, just take it back to him. And he said, you know, thank him for it. He says, well, I, I was not supposed to tell you this, but there's stuff in the pockets that you probably are going to want. There's cash in the pockets of this thing. So he's like, well, I don't want that, but I do want the cash. So they pulled the cash out and gave it to him. He took the, the, the garment back to the person. And, and he, he said to me, he said, this is a, a guy you would never know that about him, but that's what he does. You'd never know that. But you know what he is? Listen, you know what he is? He's a succor. He's a person that sees a need. He's not looking for bells and whistles to go off. He's just looking to find a way to be a blessing to somebody. I, I, I was reading this, and I won't mention names. I don't want to hurt people or make them feel a certain way. But in my heart right now, I'm thinking of you and I'm saluting you. There are people like that in this room that do that. When I was studying this out, it, uh, we were eating supper. I told Stacy, I said, uh, I know some people. I know them personally. That's who they are. They do that for people. They help them. Nobody ever knows their name, but they run to the aid of people and help them. 
You know what you are in God's book? Even if nobody else knows your name, you're worthy of a salute. You're worthy of a salute. The third one, look down at, in, in verse number 3. <clears throat> Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. He says, who have for my life, listen to what it says, laid down their own necks. I wrote down next to this here, they're sacrificial. Who have laid down their life, uh, laid, down, laid, laid down their own necks, for my life laid on their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Sacrificial people. Priscilla and Aquila, you've probably heard of them a lot in the Bible, and I, I spent some time like studying these people out, but they were helpers. They laid down their own necks. And look at verse number 5. Watch this now. Likewise, greet the churches, the church that is in their house. They didn't just sacrifice their self, they sacrificed their home for somebody else. And you know what? That wasn't just the one-time deal. This is kind of who they were. And you first read about them in Acts chapter number 18, and they have been expelled from Rome. Uh, uh, Aquila is a Jew, and so uh, the, the uh, Claudius in Rome has made them leave. All Jews leave. And so they left where they were at in Rome, and they came to this area of Corinth. And they, they got there, and they ran into Paul, and they linked themselves together with Paul because they were all tent makers. And they got together with Paul. I don't know if that's where they got saved or another, another place, but they yoked themselves together with Paul, and they stayed with that church there in Corinth for a year and a half with Paul and worked in that ministry there with him. And then when they left to go to Ephesus, they went with, to Ephesus with Paul. And when they got there, Paul then left, but they stayed in Ephesus. And what they did is they actually started a church in their, in their house at Ephesus. They were involved in that church, and that was meeting in their house as well. There's other places that talked about in 1 Corinthians 16. It talks about their, them, them having a house that they had church in their house. So this is the MO of these people, and now you find them in Rome. They've gone back to Rome, and while they're in Rome, they've given their house up to, to have a church in their house. These are people that know the Word of God and are involved in helping other people know the Word of God. When Apollos, who was eloquent, he was a great speaker, he just didn't know his Bible real good. When he showed up and he started trying to, to teach, they went to him privately and they expounded the truths more perfectly to them. They, they began to show him where he was lacking in some things. They didn't blow him out of the water, they didn't, they didn't make a big deal of it, they just went to him and they tried to help him understand some things. These are people, I want you to understand, these are people that love the Word of God, love the man of God, love the work of God, they wanted it to be in their house, they wanted it to be around it, didn't matter if it was in Corinth, didn't matter if it was in Rome, didn't matter if it was in Ephesus, they wanted to be around the things of God and they wanted to help other people know the things of God. Those are people worthy of salute. I didn't plan this this way. A lot of these, these, uh, these things, I, <clears throat> I didn't plan them to, to, to work out in this order. All this was going to be preached the other day, uh, but I got sick and I, been, I was out for, three, for two, two services and I missed the Sunday school, the Sunday morning Sunday. This would have been preached a little while ago. Uh, and, and again, I don't try to embarrass anybody. But what my knowledge is of the young family Brother Freddie and, and, and their family, is that has been kind of their MO as well. These are people that are worthy of salute. They've spent their time going to places, strengthening churches, strengthening people, opening their home up to people to live with them and take care of them, even getting people off the streets and bringing them in and doing that. These are people, this is what service looks like. This is what, this is what salute-worthy service looks like. There are people that can be trusted to serve, that succor people, that will sacrifice themselves and sacrifice their homes for the betterment of other people. Once you look at verse number seven, he says, Salute Adronicus and Junia. I did my best to figure out if those were a male and a female. There's no way of knowing. It looks like maybe it's just two men. Adronicus and Junia. I wouldn't want the Junia name. It sounds too close to Julia. I wouldn't want that one, but it looks like it's probably just two men. 
He says they're his kinsmen. They're his kinsmen. This is an important one. They're his kinsmen. These are probably Jewish people, Jewish men. And he says this, watch what he says, my fellow prisoners. And then he says this, who were of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. When I read that, it told me something. It told, told me this. These are two men that are Jews that have faced persecution because they've gone to prison. And it tells me that they have been around longer than Paul's been around. Listen, they've been around longer than Paul's been around, and they are seemingly outlasting Paul in the ministry. They're still going in this walk that they're in. And I, I, when I read that and I was looking at it, I wrote this note down in my margin of my Bible. A servant, a succour, a sacrificial person, and then someone that is steadfast. I promise you, if you're going to do anything in ministry for the Lord, you're going to run into difficulties. <clears throat> if you're going to do anything, you're going to run into difficulties. Let me tell you who's worthy of a salute. Worthy of a salute are people that don't let the difficulties drive them out of ministering to other people, but instead they push through the difficulties and continue to serve other people. I, um, I cherish this. Somebody gave it to me. I've told you before, I think I know who gave it to me. I've never known for sure. But it's a picture of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. When I had that, so I put it on my, on my desk at, in my office and put a little note to it. And, um, and, and I had it in there. And then one day I used it as an illustration up here. And I set it up here and I thought, you know what, I'm leaving it here. As long as I'm here, I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to leave it there because I need, to, I need to remember and never lose focus of the fact that when I, not only in this pulpit, out of this pulpit, but what this ministry is about is about serving other people. It's never about me being served as much as it is about me washing the feet of other people, serving other people. That has got to be the mindset of anybody that is serving, is, is serving others. That's got to be the mindset. Now, what's interesting about this night that this took place, and I've preached it before, what's interesting about this night is that this is the night that Jesus is in an upper room telling His closest people that He was about to have His blood shed and His body broken for them. That's what He was telling them that night. That's what that, that, that meal and that time together was about that. And while he was doing it, I've said this before, but while he was doing it, while he's pouring himself out to, to, in, in one area, there is Judas that is, it wants him dead. Why does he want him dead? Well, because he rebuked him one day. And he, he doesn't like him anymore. He's mad. They rebuked him. He wants him dead. On the other end, there's another man named Peter who is going to, and Jesus knows this, he's going to deny him, deny that he even knows him, cuss and deny him. And in the middle, when you read the story, you find two of them are arguing over, am I greater than you or are you greater than me? Which one of us is better? And here is Jesus pouring out everything that he's there for. His 33 and a half years is, is up to this pinnacle point, is to live his life, a sinless life, and then to give his life for these people that can care less about what he's doing. They're more concerned with my feelings got hurt or, 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 or defending my own self or who's greater. And he's pouring out the greatest truth that's ever been given in the history of truths. And they're bickering over, well, how come I get, doesn't get used as much as you get used and I don't? And if it would have been me, I would have said, you bunch of low-down, dirty, good for nothing, what in the world have I been wasting my three years for? You bunch of bums. What? I'm trying to give myself for you and you can't. You're arguing over who's greater and I'm trying to give my life for you and for the whole world. You, you, don't think, you think you're carrying problems. I'm carrying the literal weight of the world on my shoulders. And that's what I would do. You know what he did? He said, you guys gather around, I'm going to give you an example of something. I'm going to put on a towel. I'm going to get on my knees in front of you. God in the flesh. I'm going to get on my knees in front of you. 
and I'm going to wash your dirty feet. And he said, what I do, you, you don't even understand right now. You will one day, but you don't now. You know what he did? He showed him an example of being a servant. But it's not going to always be easy. There'll be times that you'll have to be steadfast. You'll have to push through difficulties. There'll be times that you'll be a prisoner. And you have to just keep going. The Bible said in Hebrews 6, 9, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Though we thus speak, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards His name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, let, uh, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall we reap if we faint not. <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Can I tell you something? If you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to have to be steadfast. You have to keep going even though it doesn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out. You can't quit. I want you to see lastly, the last thing I just want you to see is you can find servants and succours and sacrificial people and those that are steadfast. Look down in verse number 17. I'm going to balance this out. Those are worth salute. These aren't worth a salute. Verse number 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to doctrine, which ye have learned, and avoid them. <clears throat> the last one I want you to get is the separators. You have servants and succours and sacrificial people and people that are steadfast going through the difficulties and they continue all the way to the end. But the ones you've got to watch out for are the separators. Those are the ones that are causing division and offenses contrary to doctrine which you've learned, and you need to avoid those people. Salute these, avoid those. And we talked about, look, we talked about in Romans chapter number 14 that, uh, you know, there's some things that are, aren't, that aren't worthy to divide over. There's some preferences and persuasions that are not really a big deal. I mean, uh, you know, if, if you've got a Christmas tree and I don't, I don't have to not be your friend because you have one and I don't have one. We were doing the, the Bible college class uh, today, and they set it up in the ladies, ladies' Sunday school room is where I chose to do it in this, this afternoon. And I said, when they, when they zoom out and they do it, there's a Christmas tree off to the set. I said, you don't have the Christmas tree in the, in the image. So they said, no, we'll zoom in to get the Christmas tree out. I said, well, I don't, want to be, I don't want to offend anybody. This might go into anywhere of the world. I don't want anybody to get offended just because they saw a Christmas tree. Because people will. They get offended over the slightest little things. People get offended over things. You don't have to divide over things like that. You don't have to, you don't have, to have issues over things that really don't matter. Yes, that really don't matter. We spend more time dividing over things that don't matter, more time than we should be uh, uh, spending with, with uniting over things that do matter. Yes. <clears throat> you know, I had the guy, um, maybe... Joe, Joe may have said this to me, I don't remember. I saw it, I've seen it before though, about the guy that was, that was met up with a, an individual and said, are you, uh, uh, you know, being the talk, and he said, well, we're, we both go to church. Oh, you're a Christian? Yeah. Where do you go to church? I go to a Baptist church. Oh, me, I go to a Baptist church too. And the first guy was like, wait a minute, what type of Baptist church is it? He said, well, it's independent. He said, oh, okay, all right, all right, wait a minute. Hey, what kind of independent? He said, independent, fundamental, Bible believing. Okay, all right, we can hang out. Wait a minute. Independent, fundamental, Bible believing, what kind of Bible do you use? He said, a King James, all right, good. He says, uh, wait a minute, do you believe it's inspired or preserved? And the guy says, I believe it's preserved. Ugh, I knew there was something about you I didn't like, and they can't, can't have fellowship anymore. You know what we do? We keep trying to find enough things to divide over instead of things that we could be uniting over. All right, well, that's what Romans 14 talked about. You don't need to spend time dividing over things that don't matter. But listen now, but in chapter 16, there are some things you may need to question and look at and make sure you're on the same page about. When it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to those types of things, you do need to look into those things. 
And he said, you need to watch out for these people. I, I wrote down two things. Their motives and their methods. Look at their motives. Mark them that cause division, offenses contrary to the doctrine, which you have learned to avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. I think that's good because it's all about their own appetites, their own lusts, their own desires. And by good words and fair speeches, that's their methods, they deceive the hearts of the simple. They're all about fair speeches and fair words and, and stories that sound good and you leave thinking great things, but they never preach the Bible. And they're wrecking places. So he says this, and I'm done. Verse 19, For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. You know what? Stay away from all this crazy nonsense, crazy type of stuff that's out there. Look, stick with what the Bible says. Don't get hung up in all this other craziness that's going on. Stick with the Bible. Be wise concerning that which is good. Be simple, meaning you don't know much about all the evil that's going on. Stay away from that and soak up all the good. And then he says, just keep on going because, great verse to end on, verse number 20, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. He always said, just keep on going. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing all the things you're supposed to do. Hey, you say, but, but things are getting tough. There's a lot of people out there that are causing division. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of bad things. Some of these salute-worthy people are going off the scene. When's the Lord coming back? He says, listen, just keep going. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. It's not too much longer, and we're going to be coming with Him to rule and to reign, and we'll be bruising Satan under your feet shortly. It's coming. Just hold on. Don't quit. Don't back up. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Just keep going another mile. It'll be worth it all at the very end of the race. That's what he says. You know what that is? That's salute-worthy Christianity. That's salute-worthy Christianity. <clears throat> when I read this, I thought, man, I sure want to be that. I sure want to be that. And you know, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the, the grease. You know that? And sometimes... I'm telling you, in ministry and things, you can get looking at all the issues and the things, and you tend to overlook the wheels that are just rolling along so good. And I'm telling you, there's so many of you that are just doing such a great job for the Lord. And if, if I could, I'd call each one of your names out, and I'd salute you, because you're worthy of it. You're just here. I mean, my goodness. If there's ever been an excuse to not be on a Wednesday night, there is here, because everybody and their brother's sick. You could be like, I'm staying at home, I'm not getting sick. But you're faithful. And you're you're being you're being here and you're and you're you're soaking it up. And you come and you practice songs wherever the ladies will and sing songs of praise to God. Even though some of those ladies are carrying burdens, sing in praise to God. You're just marching on and doing things for God. And that's commendable. It really is. And I, and I really, I, I'm honest when I say this, I salute you for just being good Christians. In a day when it's real easy to be bad Christians, I salute you for being good Christians. Thank you. Let's stand to our feet. <clears throat> <clears throat> The youngs are planning on being here through the through this uh, this weekend. So if y'all get a chance, get in touch with them and do something with them, visit with them uh, while they're here and and get to see them. They are a blessing to. I know they've been a blessing to a lot of your lives, and so get around them as much as you can and, and spend some time with them while they're here. They are a blessing to a lot of people in a lot of places. I know y'all were sad to see them go. A lot of people were glad to see them come back, and uh, so y'all just try to love on them while they're here a little bit. And uh, Lord, bless you and bless them for it. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for your word and the truth that's found in it and the encouragement we get from it. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to live out these examples. Help me live these examples out. Lord, I, I could read through this and find places where I'm just not, I'm not up to par in some of these places and I, I, I need to work on myself. Lord, I pray you help each one of us to do it. Lord, I pray that you help us to uh, just to, 
just to honor you and glorify you and the things that you've given us to do. Lord, all the way to the very end until you come back. And not to stop, not to back up, not to, not to get sidetracked or, or irritated, but to stay steadfast and keep serving, keep washing the feet, keep looking forward to you. Father, help us now. Help these people. Bless them in a powerful way. Bless those young people that are next door, that are being preached to over next door. Bless their lives. Bless their homes. Lord, bless these people in these different ministries, these people that have started the prayer ministry, or these people that are given their time every single Saturday to pray for people and bear their burdens. Thank you for that. Thank you for the people that are serving in music and giving of themselves to sing and people that are teaching Sunday school classes and studying and giving their time and, and diligently studying out the Word of God. People that are going soul winning and trying to win people on Saturdays. Or people that are teaching Bible college classes. People that are working the sound booth and the, the video ministry. Just all the different things. People that, Lord, there should be a special salute for all these ladies that are working in the nursery. Or just all that's being done around here to try to, to glorify you and to honor you and to help others. Lord, I, I pray that you'd help them know they're saluted. Bless these people now in Jesus' name. Amen.